What's up, Wavelings, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I wanted to talk about the class changes and covenant abilities for Shadowlands, both of which had their own featured articles. Everything is revamped with all the classes. It's actually kind of crazy. I was a bit slower on getting to cover either of these, but the plus side is that I get to cover both of them together. So the way I'll handle this is by doing the following. I'll first go over each of the Covenant's signature abilities, which are abilities available to all members of the Covenant regardless of class, race, or specialization. Then, after a comment on that, I'll move on to covering changes to each of the classes and their specializations. As I get to each class, I'll mention the Covenant abilities you'll have available to you if you play that class based on which Covenant you pick. If you enjoyed this video as you watch it, make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment down below with whatever questions or feedback you might have. If you really love it and want to see more Shadowlands coverage from me, make sure to go ahead and get subscribed. Then hit that bell to stay notified of future uploads. Anyway, let's get into it. When the time comes to ally with one of the four covenants, you'll want to carefully consider the abilities the covenant will provide you. Each provides two abilities tailored to the theme of the covenant. The first of these is the covenant signature ability. The following is a list of each covenant as well as their signature abilities. Kyrians. The denizens of Bastion, these angelic beings embrace humility and service to their order. Allying with the Kyrians, you will gain the ability Summon Steward, which allows you to call your steward to bring you a file or potion of serenity that can be consumed to restore some of your health and remove all curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects. Your steward additionally offers access to a selection of useful amenities, each of which once per day. Venthyr. Making their home in Revendreth, the vampiric Venthyr are the punishers of the unworthy, seeking to rehabilitate the sinful souls sent to them by the Arbiter. Allying with the Venthyr, you will gain the ability Door of Shadows, which causes you to wend through the shadows, appearing at the target location. This appears to essentially be a cast of Blink, but with the ability to choose where you want to go instead of just moving forward. Cool. Necrolords. Comprised of liches, warlords, and spies, the Necrolord Covenant calls Maldraxxus home. They make up the army that defends the Shadowlands. Allying with the Necrolords, you will gain the ability Fleshcraft, which forms a shield of flesh and bone that prevents damage equal to a portion of your maximum health. Standing near the corpse of a defeated enemy when the ability is cast will create a larger shield. Night Fae Guardians of nature, the Night Fae inhabit Ardenweald and shepherd beings through the cycle of life and death. Allying with the Night Fae, you will gain the ability Soul Shape, which turns you into a Vulpin, increasing movement speed. You can reactivate Soul Shape to teleport a short distance forward. Additional cosmetic forms can be earned and collected through a variety of gameplay. While out in the world, this effect has a short duration before it wears off, but lasts indefinitely while in rest areas. So, kind of a travel form like druids for a short time, with an optional blink to top it off. Next, I'll talk about each of the class and specialization changes. If you'd like to go to your class, I'll provide links in the description to timestamps. Check it out! I'll go ahead and just talk about them in the order they're presented in the article. Also, if you'd like to read the article yourself, a link to that will be in the description. First up is Death Knight. Prior to getting to the class changes, I'll talk about the Covenant abilities. If you align with the Kyrian, you'll have the ability Shackle the Unworthy, which reduces the target's damage they deal to you and deals arcane damage to them over time. Its cooldown is reduced when you damage the affected target with a rune-spending attack. If you align with the Venthyr, you'll have Swarming Mist, which increases your dodge and deals shadow damage over time to enemies within range of the ability. When it deals damage, you gain additional runic power. Necrolords, you'll have Abomination Limb, which sprouts an additional limb for a limited time, dealing shadow damage to nearby enemies. If an enemy is further away from you, they are pulled to your location. Night Fae, you'll get Death's Dew, which replaces Death and Decay. It corrupts the targeted ground, causing shadow damage over a duration of time to targets within its area. Affected enemies deal reduced damage to you, and their power is transferred to you as an equal amount of strength. While you remain within the area, your Necrotic Strike and Heart Strike will hit additional targets. Scourge Strike and Clawing Shadows will hit all enemies near the target. They make note that in Legion, Death Knights became very narrowly focused thematically around their specs, and they wanted to restore abilities to all specs. You'll see this as a trend for the rest of the classes too. For Death Knights, we have the following. Death and Decay, Anti-Magic Zone, Lichborn, Raise Dead, and Chains of Ice are now baseline for all Death Knight specs. Sacrificial Pact is a new ability coming to Death Knights of all specs, enabling Death Knights to perform a forbidden ritual, sacrificing one of their undead minions, siphoning their health, and causing them to explode and deal damage to nearby enemies. Getting a little bit more spec specific, for Blood, Blood Tap has been redesigned, consuming essence from slain enemies to generate a rune when used. It is repeatable whenever a Bone Shield charge is used. Rune Tap is now baseline to Blood, no longer needing to be selected as a talent. Relish in Blood will significantly heal these bloody bruisers for each active Bone Shield charge and grant 5 runic power when Death and Decay is cast while Crimson Scourge is active. For Frost, you will now have the ability to choose between using two one-handed weapons or one two-handed weapon to play your class. 
Frostworm's Fury is now baseline to Frost, no longer needing to select it as a talent. Hypothermic Presence is a new talent for the spec, which cuts the runic power cost in half for abilities for a period of time. For Unholy, Summon Gargoyle is now baseline, no longer needing to select it as a talent. Army of the Damned is a new talent, returning as an even stronger force with a Magus of the Dead. Hailing from Maldraxxus, these Magi will possess the ability to cast Frostbolt and Shadowbolt. Death Coil and Epidemic casts will reduce the Army of the Dead's cooldown. Additionally, Magi of the Undead will also fight with the Death Knight when they cast Apocalypse, which also receives the same cooldown reduction from Death Coil and Epidemic. Lastly, their mastery will increase the Death Knight's shadow damage and the damage of their minions. Next is Demon Hunter. For the Covenant abilities, if you align with the Kyrian, you will have the ability Elysian Decree, which carves runes into the ground, which then detonate, dealing arcane damage and shattering lesser soul fragments from enemies. Venthyr, you'll have Sinful Brand, which brands an enemy with the Mark of the Venthyr, reducing their melee and casting speeds, and inflicting shadow damage over time. Additionally, activating Metamorphosis applies this to all nearby enemies. Necrolords? We don't know yet, it's still a work in progress. Nightfay, You'll get the Hunt, which charges to an enemy, inflicting nature damage and rooting them. For a period of time, Demon's Bite and Shear generate additional fury when used on that target. You can reactivate the ability every 30 seconds to teleport behind the marked target and ignore line of sight. On to the class changes. All Demon Hunters now share a single resource, Fury. No longer is Pain for Vengeance. Additionally, Immolation Aura will now be baseline for both specs. For Havoc, you'll have a new passive, Unending Hatred, which increases their Fury's maximum capacity. Additionally, the Dark Slash talent will be replaced with Essence Break, which deals Chaos damage and increases the damage that both Chaos Strike and Blade Dance deal for the duration. For Vengeance, Fell Devastation will now be baseline. Demonic will be a new talent option for Vengeance, which will cause you to temporarily enter Metamorphosis form following a Fell Devastation cast. Vengeance talents have been substantially reworked as a whole combining talents and shuffling some talents to other locations, as well as adding new talents for new build possibilities. They seem to not like how there were no variation from Demon Hunter to Demon Hunter in this respect. One of the new talents is Bulk Extraction, which rips a soul fragment from up to five enemies around the Demon Hunter and consumes them. It also increases the healing of Fell Devastation and converts Overhealing into Absorption Shield, which lasts a while. Next is Druid. For the Covenant abilities, if you align with the Kyrian, you will get the ability Kindred Spirits, which forms a bond with an ally. You can then empower the bond for a time, granting you an effect based on your partner's role and granting them an effect based on your role. Venthyr, you'll have Ravenous Frenzy. For a period of time, Druid spells you cast increase your damage, healing, and haste by a percentage, stacking. If you spend time idle, the Frenzy overcomes you, consuming a percentage of your health per stack and stunning you, then ending. Necrolords, you'll get Adaptive Swarm, which allows you to command a swarm which heals or deals shadow damage to a target and increases the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them. Upon expiration, it travels to a new target within range, alternating between friendly and enemy targets, with a max number of jumps, of course. Nightfay, you'll get Convoke the Spirits, which rapid fire casts 16 druid spells and abilities over 4 seconds. The spells are Moonfire, Wrath, Regrowth, Rejuvenation, Thrash, Rake, Shred, and Iron Fur. They will be each cast on appropriate nearby targets. As for class changes, all druids will now have baseline Ferocious Bite. Bark Skin, Cyclone, Stampeding Roar, and Iron Fur. Additionally, Heart of the Wild returns as a talent, letting druids who want to use off-roll abilities during combat. Additionally, the affinity talents associated with each spec also gain an additional utility ability. For balance, it's Typhoon. Feral gets Maim, Guardian gets Incapacitating Roar, and Restoration gets Ursul's Vortex. For balanced druids, Wrath and Starfire will grant each other alternating lunar and solar eclipses for a longer duration, with moments of celestial alignment allowing both to occur at once. Star Surge will extend the current eclipse to continue focusing power into either Wrath or Starfire, and Starfall extends your current Moonfire and Sunfire effect. Starfall is also going back to the design used from Wrath of the Lich King through Warlords of Draenor, affecting the area around the player continuously instead of needing to select an area which is affected. For Feral, Blood Talons is being reworked, making it so that using Shred, Rake, and Ferocious Bite in quick succession will empower your next rip. For Guardian, Berserk is a new ability for the spec, reducing the cooldowns of Mangle, Thrash, Growl, and Frenzied Regeneration, while also cutting the cost of Iron Fur in half. Renewal returns as a talent choice, instantly healing the Druid when used. For Restoration, Swift Mend now has a reduced cooldown, but now consumes heal over time effects. Nature's Swiftness will once again allow Regrowth, Rebirth, and Entangling Roots to be cast instantly, Nourish is a new talent option which heals an ally for a large amount of their health. It receives triple the effect from your mastery, which increases the healing for each act of restoration heal over time spell on the target. Next is Hunter. 
For Covenant abilities, if you align with a Kyrian, you will get the ability Resonating Arrow, which fires a resonating arrow to a target location which fills the area with anima, causing your attacks to ignore line of sight to enemies in the area. You also have increased critical strike chance against them. Venthyr, you get Flayed Shot, which fires a shot at your enemy which applies a shadow damage over time effect. Also, each time it deals damage, you have a chance to gain Flayer's Mark, which causes your next kill shot to be usable on any target regardless of their current health. Necro Lords, you get Death Chakram, which throws a Chakram at your target, naturally, which rapidly deals shadow damage. Each time the Chakram damages a different target, its damage is increased and you generate focus. Night Fae, oddly enough we don't know yet, as it's still a work in progress. For class changes, all Hunters will be able to use Arcane Shot, Eyes of the Beast, Hunter's Mark, Kill Shot, Scare Beast, and Tranquilizing Shot baseline. They'll also have their stable size increased significantly, although they haven't yet explicitly made note of how much it is increased. For Beast Mastery Hunters, Bloodshed is a new talent which you can teach your companions which, when used, applies a bleed effect to their target. Additionally, the Scent of Blood talent is being reworked. It will now activate when Bestial Wrath is used, to bloody a target and empower their bonded beast to take down threats quickly. Venomous Bite will be a new ability, taking the place of Spitting Cobra. When Bestial Wrath ends, a cobra will come to aid the hunter in combat. Its power will increase based on how many times you've used Cobra Shot during Bestial Wrath. For Marksman, Dead Eye is a new talent available which lets the hunter store two charges of Kill Shot. It also makes Aimed Shot recharge faster for a short time whenever Kill Shot is used. Binding Shackles is also a new talent, a passive one which causes enemies rooted by Blinding Shot to deal less damage to the hunter for a short time after being released from the root. Lastly, Volley is yet another new talent which enables the hunter to rain arrows down on a targeted area. It also applies the Trick Shots buff to the hunter, causing all aimed shot and rapid fire abilities to ricochet and hit up to 5 additional targets for half the damage for the duration of Volley. For Survival Hunter, Hydra's Bite, Butchery, Steel Trap, Tip of the Spear, and Flanking Strike are all getting damage boosts. Additionally, Chakrams will have a reduced focus cost. Up next we have Mages. For Covenant abilities, if you align with the Curian, you will get Radiant Spark, an ability which deals arcane damage instantly and additional damage over time. The target takes a percentage of increased damage from your direct damaging spells, stacking each time they are struck. The effect ends after a certain number of spells are cast. Venthyr, you get Mirrors of Torment which summons mirrors that make it so that when the target casts a spell or ability, a mirror is consumed to inflict shadow damage. Also, their movement and cast speed are slowed. The final mirror will instead inflict shadow damage to the enemy, rooting and silencing them for a time. Necrolords, the ability Deathborn, which transforms you into a skeletal mage for a period of time. While in this form, your Frostbolt, Fireball, and Arcane Blast are greatly enhanced and your spell damage is increased. Night Fae, you get Shifting Power, which deals nature damage over time to nearby enemies. While channeling this, your ability cooldowns are reduced. Mage class changes are, all mages are getting Arcane Explosion, Fire Blast, Frost Bolt, Mirror Image, Fire Ward, and Frost Ward baseline. Alter Time is a returning ability which allows mages of all specs to set a point, then recast the spell later to return to the initial cast location. All mages can also learn a new talent, Focus Magic, which grants an ally a slight bonus to their critical hit chance. For Arcane Mages, Clear Casting now has an additional stack. Your Mastery now affects all spells instead of just Arcane Blast and Barrage with its damage increase. Touch of the Magi is no longer a talent, but instead is a baseline Arcane ability. Enlightened is a new talent which rewards mana management. While your mana is above a certain amount, it empowers all Arcane damage you do. When below that threshold, it significantly increases mana regeneration. For Fire, your Mastery is being reworked. Fire Blast now acts as a Catalyst. When used against an enemy who is ignited, it spreads to up to 8 enemies close to their target. Blast Wave now does more damage and has an increased slow duration. Kindling's Combustion cooldown reduction is increased and Pyroclasm's damage bonus to Pyroblast has been increased. For Frost, Flurry's Winter's Chill has a much longer debuff now and causes the next two spells to treat the target as frozen. Then we're on to Monks. For Covenant abilities, only the Kyrian one is known, which is Weapons of Order. When used for a short duration, your mastery is increased by percentage, then there's an additional effect for each spec. Windwalker's Rising Kick cooldown is reset instantly, and your Rising Sun Kick reduces the cost of your Chi abilities. Brewmaster's Keg Smash cooldown is reset, and enemies hit by Keg Smash take increased damage from you. This one stacks. Mistweaver's Essent Font cooldown is reset instantly and heals nearby allies on channel start and end. As for class changes, all monks will be able to use Expel Harm, Fortifying Brew, Spinning Crane Kick, and Touch of Death as baseline. Additionally, the Celestial Invoke for your spec is now baseline instead of being a talent. 
For Brewmaster, there's a lot of changes. You can now choose between using one-handed or two-handed weapons again. You'll also have access to a new talent, Shuffle, which increases the amount of physical damage that's staggered when you use one of several abilities including Blackout Kick, previously called Blackout Strike, as well as Keg Smash, and Spinning Crane Kick. Celestial Brew is a new ability which absorbs damage based on your attack power. Clash, another new ability, causes both you and your target to bull rush each other and, upon impact, root your opponent. Celestial Flames is a new talent which makes it so that when you drink brews, there is a moderate chance to gain Celestial Flames, which slightly increases Breath of Fire's damage reduction and spreads its periodic damage effect to targets struck with Spinning Crane Kick. Yet another new talent, Exploding Keg, is an ability which immolates enemies on impact and blinds them for a brief period of time. Lastly, Touch of Death now not only instantly kills any creature with less health than you, but it also clears remaining stagger damage. For Mistweaver, Touch of Death now also spawns healing spheres for your allies in addition to instantly killing a creature with less health than you. Additionally, the talent Invoke Chi Ji, the Red Crane, has been reworked. It now increases your physical damage moderately and heals your allies for part of the damage inflicted on enemies. Chi Ji also makes Mistweaver monks immune to movement and parrying effects. For Windwalker, you can now choose between one-handed or two-handed weapons again. Touch of Death now, in addition to instantly killing creatures with less health than you, also spawns Chi Spheres that you can consume to perform devastating blows. Additionally, there's a new passive talent, Dance of Chi Ji, which has a moderate chance to make the next Spinning Crane Kick free to use and add a significant amount of extra damage to all its strikes. Paladins are our next class. For their Covenant abilities, if you align with the Kyrian, you get Divine Toll, which instantly casts Holy Shock, Avenger Shield, or Judgment on several targets within range. The ability depends on your current spec. Venthyr, you get Ash and Hallow, which hallows an area, dealing shadow damage split among enemies and restoring health split among injured allies over time. The affected area remains filled with anima, causing additional shadow damage to all enemies. You gain the benefits of Consecration while in the area. Necrolords and Nightfae are not yet known. For class changes, all paladins get Blessing of Sacrifice, Hammer of Wrath, Sense Undead, Shield of the Righteous, Turn Evil, and Word of Glory as baseline abilities. Related to that is the fact that Holy Power is now on all paladin specs. Additionally, auras have returned. Concentration, Crusader, and Devotion auras are now baseline. Retribution aura has been reworked to allow paladins to avenge fallen allies with a short burst of avenging wrath. The talents Divine Purpose, Holy Avenger, and Seraphim are now available for all specs. Holy Avenger allows the burst generation of Holy Power for a short window. And Seraphim allows you to spend Holy Power to increase your secondary stats for a moderate amount of time. For Holy Paladins, Glimmer of Light is now a level 50 talent, which is the level 100 row pre-squish. Aura of Mastery now affects the returning auras, not talents. For Protection, Shining Light is a new passive ability which makes it so that critical hits with Judgment make your next Word of Glory free. For Retribution, Wake of Ashes is now baseline, no longer needing to select a talent. Empyrean Power is now a talent. Crusader Strike has a chance to make your next Divine Storm cost no Holy Power and deal more damage. Priests next, their Covenant abilities are Curian Alignment gets you Boon of the Ascended, which grants you a buff, the Boon of the Ascended, granting access to Ascended Nova and Ascended Blast, and increasing your movement speed. Both abilities damage your enemies, heal your allies, and build power that will erupt dealing damage to enemies and healing allies at the end of the buff duration. Venthyr grants you Mind Games, which deals shadow damage. Then for a period of time, the next damage they deal will heal their target, and the next healing they do will damage their target. Necrolords, you get Unholy Nova, which causes an explosion of dark energy, healing nearby allies and infecting nearby enemies with Unholy Transfusion. This deals shadow damage over time, then enemies who damage the affected receive healing. As far as class changes go, Mind Blast, Mind Soothe, Power Infusion, Shadow Word Death, and Shadow Word Pain are all now baseline to all specs. Power Infusion has been changed so that it can now be cast on allies. For Discipline, Light's Caress is a new talent which enables you to heal your allies by blessing them with Power Word Barrier, and healing them again if they're still under the barrier when it expires. The talent Shadow Covenant has been reworked so that it instantly heals a target ally and four other injured allies within a small area and moderately increases the damage the priest deals for a short period of time, during which they cannot cast any holy spells. Mind Blast now provides a strong burst of damage and atonement healing along with absorption shield for a significant mana cost. For Holy, Circle of Healing is now baseline. A new talent has replaced it, Prayer Circle, which empowers Circle of Healing, reducing the cast time of Prayer of Healing for a time when cast. For Shadow, Death and Madness is a new talent which makes it so that each time a target dies after being slain with Shadow Word Death, you gain a substantial amount of insanity over a few seconds. In addition, Shadow Word Death resets instantly. Additionally, the Surrender to Madness talent has been reworked so as to merge Dark Ascension and Surrender to Madness into one talent. The Shadow Priest instantly gains a huge spike of insanity and casts a Void Eruption on the target. 
Over a long duration, insanity generating abilities grant 100% more insanity and you can cast your spells while moving. However, if the priest fails to slay their target during the buff, they die. Onto rogues, their covenant abilities are as follows. If you align with the Kyrian, you gain Echoing Reprimand, an ability which deals arcane damage to an enemy, extracting their anima to anima charge a combo point. Damaging finishing moves which consumes the same number of your combo points as your anima charge deal damage as if they consumed 7 combo points. Venthyr, you gain Slaughter, which slaughters the target, causing physical damage. The target's anima mixes with your lethal poison, coating your weapons for 5 minutes. Slaughter poison deals shadow damage over time and steals a percentage of healing done to the target. This also awards combo points. Necrolords, you gain Serrated Bone Spike, which embeds a bone spike in the target, dealing physical damage over time until they die. Attacking with Serrated Bone Spike causes all your active bone spikes to fracture and strike your current target, increasing the initial damage by a percentage per spike. Night Fae, this ability is not yet known as it is a work in progress. For class changes, all rogues get Instant Poison, Crippling Poison, and Numbing Poison as baseline abilities. Shiv now allows a concentrated version of poison to infect the target for a short duration. Pickpocket will frequently uncover new ingredients that can be mixed into the Crimson Vial, augmenting its power the next time it is used. For Assassination, Shiv has a bonus effect, which provides a moment of increased nature damage on your victim, mirroring the gameplay of Toxic Blade. Their poisons will be stronger and apply to their blades faster than in other rogues, along with always infecting targets when attacking from stealth. Ambush has been added back, as an option for your initial attack from stealth to do increased damage. Blindside has been updated, now giving a chance to access Ambush while out of stealth, with a higher chance on lower health. Lastly, Toxic Blade now reduces Shiv's cooldown. For Outlaw, Roll the Bones no longer requires combo points and now has a modifiable cooldown which can be manipulated to line up with staggering finishing moves. Restless Blades is a new ability which reduces the cooldown of Roll the Bones by spending combo points. Kidney Shot is now back on the toolkit for Outlaw as well, along with the ability Evasion. Between the Eyes now makes your foes more susceptible to your critical strikes instead of stunning them, with Riposte as now an upgraded talent option. Retractable Hook now also increases the speed of Rogue's Grappling Hook. For Subtlety, Find Weakness is now baseline instead of a talent, which makes it so that attacking from stealth and other abilities allow the rogue to bypass their target's armor and also causes additional shadow damage when they are struck by an eviscerate. Shadow Vault is a new talent and ability which is an area of effect finisher which also inflicts targets with Find Weakness for additional shadow damage. Dark Shadow is now passively a part of Shadow Dance, but Shadow Dance now has a longer cooldown. Rupture is returning as a new ability which is a damage over time bleed finishing move. Next is Shamans. Yes, I know I'm going to get flack for the way I pronounce that. Their covenant abilities are, if you align with the Kyrian, you gain the ability Vesper Totem, which summons a totem at the target location for 30 seconds, causing your next three damage spells or abilities to cause the totem to radiate arcane damage to enemies near the totem, and your next three healing spells will heal up to six allies near the totem. Casting the ability again while the totem is active will relocate the totem. Venthyr, you gain Chain Harvest, which sends a wave of anima at the target, which jumps to the other nearby targets. It deals shadow damage to enemies and restores health to allies. For each target critically struck, the cooldown is reduced. The ability for Necrolords and the Night Fae are not yet known as they are a work in progress. For class changes, all shamans get Chain Heal, Chain Lightning, Healing Stream Totem, Flame Tongue Weapon, Flame Shock, Frost Shock, Lightning Shield, and Searing Totem Baseline. Searing Totem of which being a returning totem spell which hurls a fireball at nearby enemies. Additionally, Maelstrom is now gone for elemental and enhancement specs. For elemental shamans, with the removal of Maelstrom, Earthshock now builds stacks of Fulmination to determine when to insert Earthshock into rotation. And Earthquake is now enabled by Chain Lightning and stacks of Seismic Thunder. Echoing Shock is a new talent which blasts the target for significant damage and makes the next healing or damage spell cast a second time shortly after at no cost. For enhancement, with the removal of Maelstrom, they are more focused now on managing cooldowns, with high points built around repeated casts of Stormstrike. Chain casting certain abilities will allow them to unleash a powerful cooldown, dealing devastating damage. Maelstrom weapon sees a return which makes it so that attacks have a chance to grant a stacking buff, which makes spells instant cast. Elemental Blast is a new talent for enhancement, granting a ranged attack option which benefits from Maelstrom weapon's cast time reduction. The talent Hailstorm has been redesigned so as to make it so that using Storm Strike resets the cooldown of Flame Shock and Frost Shock. The talent Searing Assault has been redesigned as a powerful fire attack which strikes the foe for significant fire damage, and causing Searing Totem and Flame Shock to deal damage much faster. The talent Overcharge has been redesigned to now generate 5 stacks of Maelstrom weapon instantly and another stack every second for a short duration. The talent Stormkeeper has been redesigned to make the next two Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning casts instant with bonus damage. It now benefits from Maelstrom Weapon, lowering Stormkeeper's cast time in order to chain powerful abilities. 
For restoration, Earth Shield is now baseline. Replacing it is a new talent, Surge of the Earth, which expends a few charges of Earth Shield to significantly heal the target and several nearby allies. Next is Warlocks. Their covenant abilities are, if you align with a Curian, you gain Scouring Tithe, an ability which deals arcane damage instantly and additional arcane damage over time. If the enemy dies while this effect is active, you generate additional soul shards. If they survive, the cooldown is refreshed. Venthyr, you gain Impending Catastrophe, which calls a cloud of anima to travel to the target enemy, dealing shadow damage to enemies within the path, then exploding at the target, inflicting a random curse and dealing shadow damage to all nearby enemies. Necrolords, you gain Decimating Bolt which hurls a bolt of shadow magic at your target, dealing shadow damage and increasing the damage of your next incinerates, drained souls, or shadow bolts. Decimation bolts damage and the bonus to other spells both increase as your target's health decreases. Night Fae, as with many other Night Fae Covenant abilities, is not yet ready as it is a work in progress. For class changes, all warlocks get Curse of Doom, Curse of Tongues, Curse of Recklessness, Curse of Weakness, and Demonic Circle as baseline. Tongue Tide is a new talent which empowers spells cast on a target with Curse of Tongues, causing them to seal the victim from receiving healing effects, forcing them to succumb to all incoming damage for a moderate amount of time. For Affliction Warlocks, Unstable Affliction no longer stacks on the target, but instead lasts longer and no longer consumes a soul shard. Malefic Rapture is a new ability which deals damage to all nearby afflicted by the Warlock's periodic spells, increasing for each periodic effect on the target. The talent Sow the Seeds now embeds two additional Seeds of Corruption. Combining this with Malefic Rapture can make for explosive results. For Demonology, the talent Dark Pact now scales with the spell power instead of converting a demon's health into a shield for the Warlock. Additionally, the talent Dark Fury now also increases the area of effect of Shadow Fury in addition to reducing the cooldown of Shadow Fury. For Destruction, the talent Fire and Brimstone now generates two Soul Shards for each additional enemy struck by the Warlock's Incinerate. Lastly is Warriors. Their Covenant abilities are... If you align with a Kyrian, you will receive the ability Spear of Bastion, which throws a Kyrian Spear at a target location, dealing arcane damage instantly and dealing additional damage over time, and generating Rage. Enemies hit are tethered to Spear of Bastion's location for the duration. Venthyr, you will receive Condemn, which replaces Execute. It condemns a foe to suffer for their sins, causing shadow damage. Only usable on enemies who are above 80% health or below 20% health. The primary target is weakened, preventing a moderate amount of damage they will deal to you. Necrolords, you will get Conqueror's Banner, which brandishes the banner of the Necrolords, increasing movement speed and causing Mortal Strike, Raging Blow, and Shield Slam to grant you glory. Killing an enemy grants you additional stacks of glory. Reactivating this ability plants the banner in the ground, granting an increased amount of maximum health and additional attack speed to you and your allies within range of the banner. It lasts additional time per glory up to a maximum. Night Fae, once again, we do not know as it is a work in progress. As far as class changes go, all warriors will get Challenging Shout, Execute, Hamstring, Ignore Pain, Intervene, Shield Block, Shield Slam, Slam, Spell Reflection, Whirlwind, and a returning ability Shattering Throw as baseline. Shattering Throw deals increased damage against foes protected by an Absorption Shield. Additionally, Double Time and War Machine are now baseline talents. For Arms Warriors, Piercing Howl is a new to arms ability which can be used to slow enemies. The talent Cleave has been redesigned. After striking three targets with Whirlwind, the warrior can use Cleave to strike all enemies in front of the warrior, inflicting their mastery Deep Wounds, which is a bleed effect. The talent Deadly Calm has been redesigned, completely removing the rage cost of the next four abilities and passively increasing maximum rage by a moderate amount. Lastly, the talent Dreadnought has also been redesigned, now takes on the Seismic Wave Azrite trait, dealing damage to enemies in a line. When hitting two targets with sweeping strikes, it will create two Seismic Waves. For Fury, Fervor is a new talent for Fury which causes your Whirlwind to also cast Slam on the primary target and generate additional Rage. Onslaught is a new talent and ability which causes you to brutally attack an enemy while enraged for a large amount of damage and generate some Rage. The new talent Wrecking Ball grants a moderate chance for the next Whirlwind to deal significantly increased damage. The talent Fresh Meat has been redesigned to cause Bloodthirst to always grant Enrage the first time Bloodthirst strikes a target. Lastly, the talent Frothing Berserker has been reimagined to cause you to, upon reaching 100 Rage, gain haste and movement speed over a few seconds. And for the last spec of the last class, Protection Warriors, the talent Best Served Cold has been redesigned to increase the damage of Revenge, boosted significantly whenever dodging or parrying removes Revenge's Rage cost. The talent Menace has been redesigned, making it so that Intimidating Shout causes all enemies to cower in fear for a substantial amount of time, knocking back all targets except the primary one. The talent Indomitable has been redesigned, making it so that it passively increases your maximum health by a moderate amount, and spending rage heals while the ability is active. Lastly, the talent Never Surrender has been redesigned so as to increase ignore pain depending on the amount of missing health. Sorry for the late upload, I've been crunching to get this video out. 
I hoped for it to be out a few days ago, but that obviously didn't work out. But we're here now. And that's all that matters. Anyway, I'm trying to work on efficiency of scripting, recording, and editing so as to not have delays like this. As far as I can see, practicing is the only way to perfect this, so that's what I'm doing with this. Anyway, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button to let me know, and leave any comments you have, as in questions or feedback, and I'll try to respond to the best of my ability. If you love the video or at least want to follow my channel for more updates on Shadowlands, go ahead and get subscribed, and hit that bell to stay notified of future uploads. I'm hoping to get a video out about the new character customizations tomorrow or Monday. Anyway, that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.